Hey, hey, everybody. Neelay Patel here from Silver, Silk, and Bora. And I've got the wonderfully fabulous Miss Cassandra Spicer with me from Beads to Live By. Hi, Cassandra. Hi, Neelay. How are you? <laughs> not too bad. Not too bad. Hope you're doing well, too. Yeah, you know, working on it. <laughs> Been a long day, <laughs> but you know, I, you understand when you have your own business, you have to show up in a lot of situations where you're not always feeling perfect, but um, we want to make everybody else feel as good as possible because that's what beads and jewelry making is all about, right? It's so true. It helps us sort of meditate and um, hopefully find some sense of stillness in the crazy world that we live in. Um, at least that's the way that I've always thought about it. I haven't actually... I think I sort of got to my B table the other day and I made one thing, um, which was my project for the upcoming great beat extravaganza. And I was like, I wanted to have a purposely like finished design and not sort of open up a mystery kit and just make on the fly. <laughs> Cause Hey, that's nerve wracking. And no pressure, not, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I kind of feel like I come up with better ideas if I, kind of lay something down on the table and then come back, like do a thing to it. And then I set it down again, do something else, come back to it. So it's kind of a slower progression of design, but I think it makes for a more, I don't know, just a more stunning piece at the end, like something that I've actually thought through. Um, so I guess for me, it's a nice way to just like take out some time, do some beating, get my head back in focus. So I totally get what you're saying. Yeah, definitely. And on that note of the crazy world we live in, I just want to throw out lots of thoughts and um, well wishes to our friends in Florida right now, right? Mm -hmm. I Absolutely. I am adjusting to this new global community that I'm in with uh, being online so much. And it just breaks my heart to see people, you know, in such, you know, struggles. And it's, it's gotta be gotta be a hard day down there. So if if people have internet and power still, we're thinking of yeah. Yeah, for sure. I think that's a beautiful message, Cassandra. I'm clearly feeling very sappy today in general. <laughs> 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 that's okay. Good good vibes all around. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, uh, do you kind of want to talk us through what we're gonna make today with our friends out here? Definitely. And of course, it occurred to me a day or two ago, I was like, I need to send Neelay a little like care package soon with some of our like, <laughs> seed beads. I know you don't do a lot of small seed bead stuff, but since you don't, you probably need some uh, perfectly curated seed beads to use in future videos, right? <laughs> so you can Definitely. play along. <laughs> I feel like seed beads are like a lost love for me because I enjoy getting back to them. They're amazing for, you know, just repurposing them the way that you did. It doesn't have to be a difficult bead woven project. It could be something that is still quite elaborate the way that you've constructed it. Um, but still the stringing and the technique behind it uh, is a lot more simple than what folks are probably thinking. Yeah, yeah, it really, it really is. And I think when you're including and incorporating wire, it helps to um, simplify their use as well. So that's, that's my goal with a lot of our videos that we share, whether it's with our friends like you and Zoflex or um, on our YouTube channel, I really want people to find the seed beads to be more accessible because after having done this for almost 20 years, I definitely am aware that there's a lot of really intricate seed bead projects out there that people are really intimidated by. So we're trying to take For away sure. the stigma of the complicated bead. <laughs> <laughs> like my public I agree. <laughs> uh, but I think you're doing a, uh, oh, just an, a stunning job of, um, I don't know, curating these amazing projects that you have. So this is um, either a wrap bracelet or it could be a necklace from what I understand, if it's uh, long enough. Absolutely. I think, um, you know, construction, we can talk about how things are going to hang and, you know, how that would translate into a necklace versus a bracelet. 
um, I would be more purposeful with my placement of these dangles in a necklace because in a bracelet, you know, when they're laying on your wrist, they're sticking out and hanging in a direction that makes sense. But on a necklace, it might not, um, it, like it might just need an extra jump ring, I guess, too, if you wanted to have more of that, you know, look still. But um, yeah, I did this one as a wrap bracelet and um, about a foot for me. And my wrist is um, just under, I think just under seven inches, maybe six and a half. Gosh, I don't measure it often enough because I, you know, just wrap my bracelet around my wrist and cut it as, you know, needed. But, um, yeah, this, this is constructed of your beautiful capture chain, which I've got in another totally different colorway for today to demo. But the finished bracelet I have here is, Ooh, you're gonna have to remind me. It's got the gold ball chain with the black wire over it. Yeah, so that one is the Starry Night, I believe. Okay, awesome. Well named, too. <laughs> so it's just sparkly enough. <laughs> yes, exactly. And even though it's got that darker wire over it, I thought that with the gold, it really popped these brighter colors from our August. Um, seed bead collection for those that are listening and are not familiar with our products we do a monthly subscription for the seed beads so when I say like the curated collection or August that's what I'm talking about is the the products that people received in those um, shipments but um, yeah I've got a wire wrap attaching the end caps to one of our favorite clasps, which is also on our website, the ball and socket, super mm -hmm. easy, easy to use on your own. And then we've got these great little, I mean, again, nothing new under the sun, but a embellished wrap with some 24 gauge wire and a mix of size 11 seed beads, as well as a little wire wrapped head pin for a dangle. And I switched those up between these beautiful freshwater pearls and some fire polish in this sample. Um, that one was hanging a little funky, but there we go. Oh, I agree with Patty. It's a very elegant color for sure. <laughs> I love that. I love so, yeah, everything that's... about this bracelet. It's so like, <laughs> it's slinky, it's small, dainty, but it's got so much movement to it. Well, and you know, a foot of the the capture chain, like I said, did a, a double wrap for me because of the length added by my clasp. So for people that have some scraps of like, you know, five or six inches laying around, you could do some layers of those from your different colors of capture chain or, you know, you could order like 10 feet from Nile and go crazy <laughs> <laughs> with one big wrap bracelet. Um, you know, one I, giant wrap. Yeah. You could even do a, a belly wrap with that much, I think. <laughs> you know, people ask me about waist beads periodically at the store because we have that, our in-person store as well as the website. And I'm always like super naive because it's like, I'm 38 going on 39. I'm not making any waist <laughs> beads for myself, but I mean, if I've got a cute little model that wants me to size a waist bead for them, then I can maybe think about that. <laughs> an option you I mean that's gone one way to look at it right <laughs> gone are the the cropped shirt days except maybe like with the high-waisted pants that still cover everything <laughs> so i agree <laughs> so for me. you, you too you're, for you're me. past your crop t-shirt days my crop shirts and my high-waisted jeans yeah <laughs> i'm having i'm having um customer appreciation week vibes of our, our previous chats. <laughs> oh gosh, that was so much fun. Was <laughs> that was a blast. <laughs> so yeah, I'll just walk people through right. the process of um, I'll attach one end of my class, which I really like to do at the, like right on the, um, you know, off the onset of the project, because mm -hmm. that to me helps you size it more easily. If you've got one under mm -hmm. your clasp on there, you know how much room at least half the clasp is gonna take up. And then um, we'll go through the wrapping and just see, you know, you, you let me know how far we should go with the instructions so that people have a good grasp of it. But I've got 
my colors laid out here. These are six of the eight colors from our September collection. And I've got my little messy pile all mixed together, which brings me joy, except when I think about having any leftovers and needing to see <laughs> Okay, and this then, is a strange observation, but do your nails match the palette for today? Um, did you see my Instagram post? Because I got a manicure yesterday <gasps> and I could I do, do not. This was not the plan, but look <laughs> at how entrenched in my color schemes I am, Nile. Somebody should, this is a cry for help, clearly. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That's an exciting palette and it's so perfect for fall. I, I really, I got some Pinterest inspiration for the like kind of ombre nail, you know, one of the mm. next kind of colors, but then I mean, the, the nail tech even helped me pick the colors out. That's what's so funny about it. This is just clearly, like, the perfect ball palette for those of us that still need some, like, cool colors in our lives, I guess. Nice. So I thought, because they're, like, cooler, deeper colors to an extent, that the rose gold... Um, now, this is the one with the capture chain. So, again or um, with the tinsel. So please remind me, is it the pearlesque? Um, that might even, well, yeah, I might have the rainbow in it. Let's see, that one's probably the copper capture chain. Although if it were the pearlesque one, it might have the dark um, ball chain inside of it. So you I might just swear... have a remnant capture chain um, that is copper. Okay, I was like, I swear I see. <laughs> A piece of tinsel, but I also found out yesterday that I need to update my um, prescription for my glasses. So <laughs> we'll, we'll blame it on that. You just might be seeing sparkles everywhere, and that's okay. Oh gosh, yeah, that the aura stuff from the the migraine that might be uh, might be a thing too. <laughs> oh my, I just start wearing prism glasses. Oh gosh, yeah. Which you know, for a beater, we we enjoy all the sparkle most of the time, but. Um, of course, I keep half my tools at home and half my tools at the store, so I don't have my awesome um, plastic covered flat nose pliers, but I can usually, I mean, I love your end caps. They're, for, for what they are, they're so easy to, to work with in the sense that, like, they, they seem like they should need more securing than they do. You know, like I have so many people ask yeah. me if they should throw some glue in there or, you know, if they need to like get the chain way far in. And I have never had, you know, knock on wood, my chain slip out of, and I don't, you know, open them up a whole lot further than the way they come mm -hmm. from you. And then, you know, like, just give it a good smash with your players and um, we're good to go there, right? So that's awesome. Yeah, I Yay. love how they were engineered um, originally too with the deep inside. And so it has made crimping so much easier for a lot of things, um, you know, most predominantly the capture chain for sure. Yeah, yeah, it's, I mean, I, I, I'm very impressed by it because whenever I go to use leather or something with other types of crimp um, items, I really struggle to not like just, you know, get it all gunked up with mm -hmm. glue. And, you know, there's just so much to it to make sure it stays intact and yours. It's like, I can just pop that puppy on there and get, get on <laughs> with my life. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. So for those people who are not familiar with like the basic wire wrap, we just made that little loop with our players. And I like to do a little like bend in my wire first. Other people just make the loop over the top of their players or underneath of them, I think, to begin with. But um, this way I get a nice round centered loop and that's my, um, you know, my preference. And then Pro tip, I like putting the smallest thing on first because then there's not a big old chain hanging off the end for me to fuss with while I'm adding the other side. And this is going to be the link between, you could just use a jump ring, especially if you need to like 
save some space on your, um, you know, on your ends of your project. So you could put a small jump ring on, but this felt like a fun decorative. And I'm using the same 24 gig wire just for the sake of keeping people's supply list really short. But my preference for these kinds of wraps is um, a 22 gauge if, you know, I'm doing the wrapping throughout mm -hmm. a project with just, you know, linking the beads, the 22 gauge is my preference. But for this, it's like just too easy to use all the same wire, right? I, it's so true, yeah. <laughs> it, so, uh, I and mean, this to your point, though, it is nice to have just a shorter shopping list. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I know I tend to like give people all sorts of odds and ends that, you know, it's like, I, I like to use all the beads. So <laughs> every once in a while, I try to be more kind than that. Yeah. Yeah. So the other item that we have available under our curated collections portion of the website is um, we've started offering bundles of add-on check glass in a pressed glass bundle and a fair polish bundle that coordinates specifically with that month's um, color scheme and the seed beads. So people can jump on there and add to their orders with things that they might use with the seed beads, like the pressed glass. So this is one of the pieces in the bundle. And I just can't get over there's so many shades of color that kind of pop up in the seeds. I kind of want to show people, Ooh. you know, when you start to um, admire chuck glass beads, there's so much that goes into them in the manufacturing process. And it's so hands-on and mm -hmm. I just can't quit this bead. It's got so much depth to it, but it's just <laughs> so unassuming by itself, right? Like, Oh, bead, there you go. <laughs> I agree with your, um, point on check glass beads because I feel like a lot of the big box stores have ruined the perception of how beads are created and the, the intricacy that goes behind them because a lot of those big box stores have the lower end tier level beads that are trying to imitate something right but whenever you get these specially curated beads that are from the Czech Republic and that are made correctly and from the right factories and stuff like their beauty is just so astounding they're cut really well they have such intricate details with their color mixes um i mean i can go on and on as i've been exploring more and more check glass beads um from you know from you from the other friends that i work with and there is definitely a difference uh just from who you're buying from you know yeah for sure no and i'm i'm so glad that you're willing to comment on things like that because I am terrible at remembering to kind of gently remind people of the differences in quality between the products they get, you know, from one place to the next. Mm -hmm. So that, that is an excellent point that you really do get um, the quality that you're purchasing. And also, I mean, there's a lot of us out there who are able to offer great deals on things, you know, these, these, um, bundles are 20 to 40% off because of the purchase of a set of them. So, you know, you're getting like mm -hmm. five strands at the same time. So I figured, you know, I want to make sure it's affordable for people and it, you know, helps us out to move inventory when people are going to do um, a purchase of a few more, you know, beads at once. So everybody mm -hmm. wins. <laughs> agreed. Agreed. So I've got that bead on there and I'll repeat that wire wrap and demo um, at least one of the head pin additions, but I do pre-wrap those head pins before I um, start adding my, my wrap sections. And I'm going to work, you know, from one end to the other, but the great thing about this technique is you can you know, pop more in. So, you know, maybe space them more out and err on the side of caution to begin with. And then you can go back through and kind of add um, more accents as you decide, especially once you wrap it around your wrist and test like where everything's going to lay. Cause that's another thing that I like to do with this mm -hmm. kind of design. So the, the capture chain, I just can't say enough how 
versatile it is for me as an artist that works with needle and thread and wire and stringing material because um, you know this wire you can stick it right through that um, center area you know you go to one side or the other of the ball chain but the knitted wire portion creates such a perfect canvas for attaching um, other things to it in my opinion. So I just take mm -hmm. that little piece and wrap it around once. That's the end of my wire. And I've got like about 18 inches or so of the wire here right now. And I like to leave that little piece until I get some more wrapping done so that I can um, have something to hold on to and kind of position the wire um, the way I want it to be. So I've got, you know, this is a thinner wire. Oh, that's what I started to say a minute ago is that um, our friends at Softflex make such a great craft wire. So we're using their um, 24 gauge and I think it's antique copper, but don't quote me. And we do carry that on our website as well. But if you don't see the color or the gauge that you're looking for in stock, they would have, I think, you know, everything theoretically. <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure. I'm going to so, see if I can find it on your site and post a link. Oh, it. thank you. So um, I am stringing just a handful of beads. These are again size 11s in a mixed set of colors. And this is from the September collection here. And I like to bring them down to the chain and then start to, I have to kind of hold them in place on the wire while I bring it around the chain. And it's kind of a delicate balance of because you want the chain to remain, um, you know, get, retain some of its fluidity. You don't want it to be completely wrapped and covered and, you know, looking stiff and awkward. Um, you can, you can tell now once I get through those beads, I'm doing a few more wraps with my um, wire just bare on there and I did choose to contrast hopefully that antique copper against the brighter copper of the capture chain helps a little bit I know the shine under the lights on camera is not always you know helpful even though it's pretty <laughs> <laughs> for sure I'm going to answer a question real quick while you're doing that for Sue here who's asking okay. what do you call the color of the capture chain it's beautiful that one is called Shimmering Copper, but it is currently not on my website, but will be um, later this month. I took it down for a little while because I was consolidating some colors, um, but that one, for sure, I wanted to add back to the mix. And of course, Cassandra makes it look delicious in all the ways. So I well, have it back. <laughs> and of course, wouldn't I choose something that you don't have uh, in stock right at this moment? I'm sorry, I should talk with you. <laughs> no, it's perfectly fine. I um, I did a lot of auditing, I think, since we last talked anyways. Um, so okay. Yeah, it's it's been sort of in flux lately with the color selections and stuff and trying to pare it down and whatnot. But I, I love sending out samples and things and often in time... Um, people will have them from the grab bags that they've been getting from silver silk as well. Oh, awesome. So, yeah. It's just, um, it's kind of, it's an available color at some, in some space. <laughs> well, and I, I cannot attest to how much of it I have on hand, but I do have part of a roll of it at the store. And I listed some of the silver silk colors that we carry in the capture chain on the website, like by the foot. So um, I didn't catch who was asking the question, but um, you can always take a peek there or shoot me a message too. Perfect. Yes, you do have it in stock, which is excellent. So really <laughs> well, just because the website says that. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I definitely have some on hand. So um, I you know, just was showing those bare wraps with the wire. And now I've got a few more seed beads and one of those little wire wrapped fire polish on my wire. And I'm bringing that back down to the um, project again. And when you get ready to wrap the section that has your dangle on it, um, I, you know, kind of use my hands again to create a looser, 
connection with this one. So like the part that the seed beads are on, I'm gonna like try to leave a little further away from the um, capture chain and then I'm gonna bring it back in with the bare portion again because the seed beads are creating a little bit more space that way for um, your dangle to float freely. Mm -hmm. And then just a few more seed beads after a couple of those bare wraps again. I see. Yeah, for those that are really ambitious could probably string a bunch of seed beads ahead of time and then just sort of work to space things out accordingly. Yeah, I would say um, I would still suggest maybe cutting their pieces of wire ahead of time because you do go through enough that yeah. um, you'll probably end up using a couple of, you know, like 18 inch sections in total for the project. But um, definitely you can, you know, work and then bring them down, you know, again, too. So I am happy with that wrap. And that is a very subjective <laughs> comment and it's a very personal decision for you to make so <laughs> once you get to that point and you feel good about it I bring my end of my wire so like my my wrap ended over on that side I bring my end of my wire over to the opposite side of the silver silk and stick it through there because then when I pull this down it's gonna create like a nice tight finish on that um I'm trying to do you know doing it on camera and doing it in general are two different things but <laughs> there we go there's always <laughs> yeah some added pressure to being on camera so <laughs> well and holding holding things at the right angle so people can see them versus like actually just being able to do it are two kind of different things too so I think we we had some success there. So you can see my um, my start wire is kind of hiding down there. That's what I was hoping for. And once you trim things, if you've got any kind of um, excess still, I would just take, because you don't want to get in there and cut your um, capture chain, right? That would be sad. So you can fold that over with your, um, with like a pair of chain nose, needle nose pliers and get that tucked away so it's not gonna attack you, right? I don't know why my solo layout keeps going away. Apparently uh, it wants to go to all our faces <laughs> all the time. Wants to see your face, Nile. <laughs> not mine. So there's that. That's so cute. That's such an easy link to make oh yeah I mean it I sat down after we chatted about um adding a date to the calendar and thought oh gosh I've got to come up with something and then this just like you know poured out of me quickly and easily and it felt you know exactly like what we needed to be doing with our lives tonight so <laughs> <laughs> I love it <laughs> maybe we so, could do one more to yeah or, wait, i'll yeah, definitely demo that side. again and i'm gonna demo my wire wrap on the head pin just because i feel like that's something again after almost 20 years of doing this that people tend to struggle a little bit with so we've got a right angle bend i just push that wire over and out of the way with my players on top of the bead and then i reposition these are a round nose player and it's a very skinny end. So I work like a third or to almost half the way up to make just like a smaller loop on this, but you don't want it like itsy bitsy cause that's just hard to work with. And then we wrap the bottom over. Now at this point, if you're trying to attach it to something that's already closed off you would slide this on to your piece but since we're making these ahead of time we're just gonna bring our end of our head pin around and call it a day and a good pair of flush cutters cannot be oversold and they don't have to be super expensive but 
and mine are probably a little dull too because they get used a lot. <laughs> but just getting in there so you can get down to the end of your wire and not have again like a little snaggy piece. And if I feel like my loop's a little off center, it's not the end of the world, but you can go in and like twist it with your roundest players. So that's that's all there is to that. And then if you have a handful, I've got, oh, I was like, I've got a few of those already in place. It's a little easier just to like, you know, work through your wraps one after the other too, so. So you had originally, a, you said a foot of silver silk that you made the wrap bracelet with, correct? So my, my silver silk um, on this one measures about mm -hmm. a foot and gets a two wrap um, bracelet for, for my size wrist because this gotcha. section where the clasp is, is like a good inch and a half, two inches. So that really adds. Oh, yeah. Gotcha. But so I would. How many? Oh, go ahead. Oh, no, no. I, I just was going to say, like, I, I would caution people to just, you know, either predetermine their clasp area very carefully or. Um, cut more than what they think they need in their silver silk if you know there's any mm. question to the the sizing yeah that's definitely sound advice because it's always easier to cut away but not easy to add back <laughs> or exactly and I did 100% cut, cut, away, cut away on this one that was just like the end result was that I realized when I you know was finishing it off that I only needed about a foot to begin with but um you can you know theoretically you could add another section of wire wrap in here if you, you know, had some issues or struggles with sizing your bracelet or had, you know, cut it prematurely. So, um, you know, adding a jump set of jump rings, whatever. I think there's definitely some fixes for that if you run into trouble. So don't panic, beaters. <laughs> <laughs> So um, really the number of wraps is kind of up to you. Uh, yeah, you for you sure. As many or as few as you want. I was sitting here, I was like, oh, I should give a count. So I think, you know, there's probably four revolutions that involve seed beads on this. And then probably just as many of the bare wire in between, like we showed, and I'll demo that again. So, I mean, about eight wraps gets you that like half inch and, you know, not a tight mm -hmm. coil. I like the look of the capture chain. So we're leaving it, you know, spaced out, gives it that chance to peek through. And it's, you know, different on both sides too. So you get a lot of interest in the movement when it's on your wrist. Yeah, for sure. So, you know, you could, if you were feeling really particular, like measure out, okay, I left a half inch here and leave a half inch here, but that takes some of the fun and joy out of it for me. So I'm just going to throw this wire back into <laughs> the capture chain. But I am working with that same piece of wire still. So like, you know, started off maybe with closer to two feet and then did my clasp and got that first, um, wrapped section on there so now we're we're moving on to the the next one which again this part is maybe about an inch that i um stick through the capture chain and then fold back on itself because that creates a nice um hook in your uh wire that holds that in place both like while you're starting and then at the end too. And maybe just like even one wrap around, you can do that to, to get started. Well, I don't know what Silky just jumped on our website, but you know, these notices pop up on my phone. So thank you for your order. <laughs> <laughs> Cassandra is a one woman show. She kind of just does it all behind and in front of the scenes. And this is where her and I, are basically like soul siblings <laughs> the way that we operate. Yes, that's that's a very good way to put it. And of course you, I'm sure, have those like dear support people that are just like 
happen around behind the scenes with mm-hmm. you. Um, I'd, it'd be who of me not to uh, mention people like my husband or my mom who, you know, pop down to the store and like take stuff to the post office for me or, um, you know, cover a couple hours or a day where I've got other things I need to do. Um, so this would not be possible without people like that for me. <laughs> I agree. My my parents help me out a ton um, behind the scenes as well. Sometimes I give them stuff at their house to like package up for me or put cards in Ziploc bags and things like that. Um, just like menial stuff, you know, that I'm just like, I can't worry about this right now. I got like bigger fish to fry. So um, hopefully they can kind of work to on their own, you know, at their own time and pace to be able to get some of that stuff, on, which they do. And they're very happy to do for me. And I always appreciate it. Yeah, that, that kind of work is, um, you know, nice in a way that you can like do it in front of like your favorite TV series or yeah. you know, just kind of in the background. And um, thank goodness that that is something that there are lots of sweet, helpful people out there. I don't think I realized you live near your parents. That's nice. It is. It's very handy for a, a lot of things. <laughs> if something <laughs> does not go the way I planned. It's nice to have some family nearby that can be a support system of sorts. So yeah, yeah. And they they also in turn, I think, uh, would miss me if I were gone. Yeah, yeah. No, we, we purposely stayed near family when um, Chris and I met and started, you know, making plans for our future together. So um, we're very happy to have that as well. Um, I was very slowly kind of moving through. I just wanted to show everybody again, when you're adding that dangle, it's really um, extra helpful to have the head pin bead wrapped ahead of time because then when you've got it sitting on there, you can see exactly how it's going to lay. I did the reverse with some of my first sample as far as like I made the little, you know, wraps with my seed beads and then um, attached my head pin bead and you know you kind of just have to live with whatever's happening at that point <laughs> or redo your <laughs> wraps so um that's something that you know even just working through your process to teach other people you sometimes come up with better um better mouse traps i'm sure you've had that experience too nile for sure yeah i've i think i just did that this weekend in fact right started something and i'm like I could do that way better. Do I want to? Or do I need it? <laughs> but then I always end up like, I just, I, it's one of those things that I kind of have to step away from my uh, table and then reapproach it with more patience sometimes. And then I get it done correctly the way that it needed to be. But then I'll think of something on the spot that I was just like, man, I wish I would have thought of that earlier. <laughs> it would have made your life so much easier, right? Yeah, for sure. So we've got that second wrap on. And if you think I should talk through one, I can definitely do um, a third one. It's totally up to, if the Silkies have any questions too, there's another great plan to. Oh yeah, this is a good segue for questions. I think for me, I think you explained the tutorial for making these wraps pretty awesome. And it was nice to see a couple of them, um, you know, uh, be put together. Yeah. Demoed, yeah. (laughs) Let's see. Cecilia says it looks good. She said that she also received her package from Silver, so can't wait to open it. I I can't wait for you to open it, too. It's going to be... Why are you waiting, um, Nile? (laughs) Yeah, why are you waiting, Cecilia? (laughs) I was like, is there a rule? Does she have to wait until a certain day? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> there are no rules for opening your silver silk packages so the sooner you do it the sooner you can get uh right to um making stuff yeah thank you I Mimi it. I really appreciate the feedback I'm enjoying my um enjoying this piece I love these colors so much I mean clearly again <laughs> I do too I for me it's nice to have colors that work well into various seasons in my opinion so like this could work as a great transition color to fall without going hard into the fall colors and then you can repurpose it and use it for spring to summer 
and even through summer if you wanted to. So that's kind of the nice thing about the palettes that you put together is that they're a little bit more, um, what's the word, more evergreen in a way. Yeah, they're not I, trendy. They're just they kind of exist to be as it is. It's really funny. I in the in the little note I included with the um, with the subscriptions, I explained that this color palette is not like it's not um, Halloween or um, Thanksgiving yet because no matter what the retail world would like us to believe, it is only September. <laughs> <laughs> no and people are already putting out like christmas stuff as well as like fourth of july stuff out there it's it's too much some days it really is and so i i felt like this was the perfect transition for in michigan we're gonna get some warm days again and that kind of inspired this idea of we're not into like it's not all flannel all the time yet <laughs> yes exactly so, we're Vicky, working our way slowly there the, oh, yeah. the wildfire would act differently. Um, you could do some stitching with it, but you would end up with a little bit more of a, um, I don't know, you, you could do maybe some loops to, to get a, a fringe effect, but I don't know if it, it would like work around the, um, the capture chain quite like you would want to and leaving the spaces really wouldn't be an option either but great question the the wildfire is something we use often for our stitching projects we really like that thread a lot yeah i would say for this technique probably the wildfire is not the best way to go because you also lose that metallic sheen that only the wire can provide and the structure that wire can give you so really if um I think for the folks that are into the more seed bead woven stuff, and we'll probably explore another project you and I down the road for some seed beading with wildfire. But for this one, I think the wire, craft wire is probably the best way to go. And if that question, that question though. yeah. And if the question is born out of someone's um, concern about using wire because they're more of a seed stitcher or a seed bead weaver, I would like to reassure everyone that that is my first love and the techniques that I am most comfortable with as well. And the 24 gauge wire is really nice because it is a lot more um, fluid and bendable and acts a little bit more like a thread than some of the heavier gauges of wire. So if, if you're gonna test the waters, this is a great type of project or a great size of wire to do that with. Um, in addition to your love of bead weaving i believe you also have and i don't know if you're teaching any virtual classes but you do teach classes and that calendar is on the beads to live by website um right now i don't see any but i feel like you're going to eventually have some down the road have you, have you been involved. peeking at my social media neela <laughs> yes um no but oh, okay good so there's, there's, <laughs> there's a like, class there's a class listed on the website right now that's in person that i am going to be offering a virtual option in i'm hoping in november and it involves some of those fabulous new pieces from vintage with the um and your the pop out <laughs> You're sold out on the class, so you must have um, some more lined up at yeah. some point. Um, yeah, yeah. But yeah, the, those pop-outs are really cool. Yeah, and the the stitching options with those or um, the macrame techniques and stuff was what kind of sold me because I have been eyeing the pop-outs for a long time, but they were um, more focused on, you know, things you would use with chuck glass or, you know, like individual beads and when they waved the little carrot in front of me of the seed beads and the <laughs> macrame, I was like, well, that's bad. So, I'm going to have to order those now. Yeah, absolutely. So, and there's actually a box sitting in front of me. Speaking of not opening your beads right away, um, I, I haven't had a chance to dig into that yet, but I've got some new pop outs from them and some new stain color for the wood too. So I'm sure you guys will see me share more um more samples for those projects coming up here. <laughs> All right. Well, um, do give a little plug to your social media for those of us out there that are unfamiliar with your store and you. So I have worked really hard to make sure that no matter what platform you're on, if you search just under our business name, which is Beads to Live By, um, 
you'll you'll see a little bit of consistency with our logo as our profile pictures. So you'll know if you see the maroon background and the little circle that says beads to live by three lines, that's that's our page or our account. And so um, we are most active on Facebook and Instagram and have been doing weekly YouTube videos between our videos with our friends like Mule. So um, you can find more inspiration in all of those places. And if you keep an eye out tonight or tomorrow, I am going to be announcing, we were chatting about this on the, um, the ahead of the video here anyway, but I have got um, a bunch of pieces and charms and things that we're going to be adding. Um, they actually are live on the website already. So people can start throwing these things into their carts, but um, I have been playing around with them and have a little bit of inspiration here that I'll oh be sure via a video. And I mean, I haven't even talked to Sarah and Kristen about wow. this. Kind of talk about, so you might see it on their page or you might see it on our page. We'll, we'll figure that part out. But um, I was just really inspired by oh, all the so cool. available spaces to put beads, right? <laughs> 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 the little yeah exactly kind of follows the the knits of, of silver silk as well there's just so many places where you can start to string through things and make your own patterns and stuff but i think it takes a really um critical design eye to see where like stuff does cross over and how the thread paths and stuff work so i'm just super impressed with this this is oh incredible. well thank you this is a pretty big piece so um, I'm thinking it's going to narrow down on the the ends and um, some of the stuff would be so nice with some silver silk as um, you know, like with this being such a large focal silver silk for the, the chain on a necklace would be excellent. And then a little bit of embellishment, et cetera. So that was part of the reason I thought, you know, what better time to debut? Um, Cause I haven't even really, showing a ton of this with my um, customers yet as far as um, all the things that we're going to have available now. So you guys are going to getting the first preview here. Lucky you. <laughs> awesome. We do feel very lucky with that. And I posted all the links. It's getting dark in this room. So I'm going to turn on a window here. Um, yeah, we feel very lucky to get that little preview. It looks yeah. um, quite delicious and exciting. And I do love all of their filigree selections from uh, Vintage. So it's nice to have it like locally or even online available um, with all the different selections for retail. Um, but I think that kind of concludes our class because we went over quite a few things and uh, learned a new technique on what to do with capture chain, which was uh, the big goal for tonight. And I'm just, again, just impressed with your talent and ability to uh, not only create stunning projects, but then to teach us how to do it is also another art. So I appreciate you so much, Cassandra. Oh, well, I appreciate you and all the silkies and uh, you guys hanging out with me tonight. I hope that if you guys are working on um, any projects that you were inspired to do after the video that you will share it in the Silver Silkies group because I definitely um, keep an eye on what's going on in there. You guys are so creative and share so many fun things with Miele's products as well as um, from all of our friends in the bead world. So Thank you for um, being vulnerable like that, right? It's kind of it's kind of uh, a little bit of a, a leap to put yourself out there when you're um, working on your art. So that's that's awesome, guys. Good job. Yeah, I think that's beautifully put, and uh, I think we're all kind of sharing our own little journey uh, through Facebook and our little group on there too. So bravo to you guys that um, committed to participating in the diet <laughs> that we just did recently oh my gosh so I've been seeing the posts periodically from that and I haven't been able to keep up as much as I'd like but yes bravo for the, the bean we're kicking some butt up there and losing all of their hoarding so <laughs> Uh, probably only to buy more from you, hopefully. <laughs> I was just going to say, hopefully only to purchase more beads, right? <laughs> and silver, so we need all the, we'll all the chain to 
display all your beautiful beads on so <laughs> it's true we'll just come up with another uh diet plan down the road and and use up all the beads that they get from you so problem solved <laughs> <laughs> problem solved all righty well thank you guys so much for joining in again i'm Nile patel and i've got the beautiful and talented miss cassandra spicer with me from beats to live by um big round of applause for her teaching tonight and um i guess i will catch you silkies out there uh, the next time we have this tutorial and keep it fun and creative and i will see you on the different social media platforms thank you so much for having me Nile. No and thank you beautiful <laughs> silkies have a great night guys good night <laughs>